So what is your typical dose for methyl tetrahydrofolate and methyl B12? What is the highest you have dosed those nutrients? Well, I usually use um, 800 micrograms of, of folate, uh, whatever for, source of folate I'm using, 5-MTHF. Uh, that usually is adequate. Depends on the patient's weight. A very large patient might get a little bit more. A child or a, a slight uh, patient might get a little more. I always try to, as we talk about in the QA course, determine the dose based on patient size compared to a 120-pound female and a 150-pound male, which are sort of standard physiological sizes. Um, and then if a person's a 300-pound male, I might give twice the dose. If a person's a 60-pound girl, I might give half the dose that I'd give to her mother, for example, and those kind of things. Um, but um, in B12, usually I give anywhere between maybe 100 to 1,000 micrograms a day. Again, we have trouble with B12 absorption sometimes. And as we said, there are many different types of nutrients. We muscle test them to see which type of B12 a patient might need, whether it be the traditional cyanocobalamin or even hydroxocobalamin or methylcobalamin or even adenosyl cobalamin. We can test to see which one the patient responds best to. And then we can use the dosage. Um, maybe it depends upon the patient's labs as well. If their MCV is high or their neutrophils are low, I'll go higher on the dosage, but maybe up to 1,000 micrograms a day of B12. If, however, the patient um, continues to respond to that nutrient on subsequent muscle, on subsequent tests on office visits when we do muscle testing, uh, then we will up the dose, especially with B12. Of course, we have to check all those absorption indicators we talked about and the activation of is it patient overoxidized so that they're not using the B12 that we're giving them, those things we talked about in one of the other featured questions a little bit ago. But those are the doses I use. Dr. McCord, what about you? Well, I would like to ask a question to you. Um, sure. If you also have a mean corpuscular volume between 95 and 100, let's say, or above 91, uh, does that alter your dosage requirement for that first 120 days when the red blood cells are replenishing themselves? Yeah, it's a good point. When you're giving B12 or folic acid, um, the... Um, as you know, the life of a red blood cell is 120 days, about four months. So you have to give those nutrients, including iron for that example, or anything else that contributes to the red blood cell production for four months. Um, if the patient has a significant laboratory finding, I might go with a little higher doses of those nutrients in the first two or three months and then taper them as the red blood cells are all getting their adequate supply of nutrients to fill their requirements for robust red blood cells as the time goes on and then maybe taper the doses after after four months or so. Um, do you have a comment on that as well? Uh, no, I I just wanted you to make that comment. That's exactly what uh, I would have said, but you said it more eloquently. 